there. Friday morning, a beautiful one. Again, rotating like a Christmas decoration. So still feeling quite jaded following the three ascents up out of the Zwift at four watts a kilogram. And I guess only now am I understanding really the concept of training stress. Um, it was 215 in just under three hours and it sure is gonna take me a little bit of time to get over that big effort. I had a full rest day yesterday. Big focus being over the course of yesterday and today, recovery, in particular, plenty of fruit and veg, which is gonna continue over the full course of the day. The veg and the fruit are giving the vitamins and minerals to recharge the body, help reboost the immune system. I reckon, that, that kind of a training stress kind of weakens the immune system for a period of time after the training. Hence, once again, emphasizing the importance of sleep and nutrition to come back stronger. Today's gonna to be a bit of upper body, um, probably some single leg Romanian deadlifts because they're much less demanding on the nervous system and some zone one, zone two high cadence. Well, that's the first time I've managed 10 on the second set in quite some time, 12 on the first. And in order to build strength through the core, the glutes and the hamstrings and the quads, especially on the climb when you're up and out the saddle, today's deadlift movement is gonna be the single leg Romanian deadlift. It gives you all the same benefits as the conventional deadlift or the trap bar deadlift, working the back, the core, the glutes, the hamstrings, the quads, but also because you're working on only one leg at a time, it emphasizes the stabilizing muscles in the knee area. And you really have to work hard on the mind muscle connection to execute the movement well. Core nice and tight, plenty of air in it, keeping the knee out over the toe and really working those stabilizing muscles and squeezing the glutes and the hamstring hard to push through with the hips to execute the movement. Another added benefit today, because I'm feeling fatigued, is that because I'm only working on one leg at a time, the amount of weight that I can lift is much, much lower than for the trap bar deadlift, for example. And that means it places much less stress on the body and the nervous system, and is not gonna adversely impact on my recovery and hopefully tomorrow's race at Mont Ventoux. So hoping right now for um, a third set of probably um, six to eight reps, let's see. That was, oddly enough, my best set, got the nine reps. Felt nice and stable, so certainly making a little bit of progress on these. I've added two and a half kilograms um, to the dumbbell there. Um, I'm going nowhere near failure, because the last thing I want to do right now is create any kind of muscle fatigue. I could, could have probably got, I guess, an 11, 12, um, really nice reps there. But um, now on to the watt bike for Victor Campanart's high cadence, I 120 RPM, zone one, zone two work. Look how my little legs were in. Stone 2, Victor Campanar style. And he used to ride for Lotto Sedar. And thus ends the high cadence zone 2 work. Now on for some post ride nutrition. Emphasis 
on boosting the immune system. So rounding off on a theme of nutrition and rest to boost the immune system and supercharge recovery, um, you've seen me be a firm advocate of the green string, the Phil Richards Ultimate Green String, um, after the workout, after the ride. And that's because it's quality ingredients, it's from a wide range of different plant sources, so the range of minerals and vitamins are fulsome. You have vitamins A, B, all the Bs actually, including B12, which boosts the immune system and reduces fatigue. Um, vitamin C, which again um, boosts the immune system and also helps expel all the cortisol, adrenaline and free radicals that are created during the stress of training. Um, vitamin D, E and K. Vitamin D obviously very beneficial for athletes and recovery in general. It also has a lovely mineral profile, calcium, zinc, potassium and iron. And that's all great for both heart health and blood health. And healthy blood that can hold on to more oxygen is obviously an amazing thing for cyclists. So I love this stuff. I always have a scoop after any training. And obviously if you eat a lot of vegetables, you're getting all these vitamins and minerals anyway. I eat a lot of vegetables, but I like this straight after the training because it dissolves quickly in the water and therefore um, is absorbed very quickly into the bloodstream and the body to aid the process of repair. And that's why I say it supercharges the process of recovery. I'm not gonna uh, down it real fast this time, I'm just gonna enjoy the, mint, the minty freshness. Now, over the last couple of months, we've been continuing very enthusiastically with our deliveries of vegetables. And if anything, I'm now an even firmer advocate of the power of veg to fuel athletic performance um, than before the lockdown commenced, because the veg is filling, it's high in fiber, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, but it also tastes incredible, especially when Jane is converting them into lovely vegetarian curries. More of that to follow. Now, Com Hunt TV gives you Pink Monster, and this thing definitely makes you fly. But the crash afterwards, well, that's something else as well. However, Bike Racing Without Mercy is pleased to present Purple Cauliflower. And this thing, well, that gives you sustainable energy. Don't tell Jane, however, as is my way, I'm gonna have a little sneak preview of this evening's curry. And here we are. Now look at the colors. They are the colors of nutrients, vitamins, fiber, quality carbohydrates, the kind of stuff that powers athletic performance. But does it taste good? Well, I know it's gonna taste good. But let me find a suitable candidate here in terms of the size, there we go little piece of the purple cauliflower. That is perfection. Not overcooked, not undercooked, just perfect. A nice little crunch that melts in the mouth. This is delicious. The vegetarian way of eating is a lovely way of eating if you invest a bit of time and effort, or Jane invests a bit of time and effort. Pre-race weigh-in. Now time for some fast digesting carbs. Racing at 8 a.m. this morning, Mont Ventoux. So this has 50 grams of very fast digesting carbohydrates in it. Because it's soluble, the body doesn't have to spend a lot of energy digesting in it. Therefore, it's absorbed very quickly into the muscle glycogen stores. Perfect for a training or a race first thing in the morning. Cheers. Yeah, that strawberry kiwi tastes great, but this is an old bodybuilding supplement and is artificially flavored. I'm gonna be back on the high five tomorrow morning for the training. So there's the bread being made at the little bread peddler. Let 
Vale, bello, café. Yes, nice. Now, Eddie Rice, who knows a thing or two about climbing out the Zwift, having spent 24 hours doing exactly that for World Bicycle Relief. Respect to you, Eddie. Well, he reached out and said, Phil, after a cycling training session, what kind of stretches do you use for recovery? And given the vlogs focused on recovery today, it's a prime opportunity to demonstrate two stretches that I prefer. The first focuses on the hamstrings, the second the quads, as follows. So for the hamstring stretch, chest up, shoulders back, and we kind of gently move forwards to touch the ground with our fingers. Now, if you can't do this, don't worry, go as low as you can without putting undue stretch on the hamstrings. And there, as you feel the muscle loosen, we try and hinge at the hips to kind of move our butt upwards to try and place more tension on the hamstrings as follows. You want to hold this 20, 30, 40 seconds and you'll gradually feel the hamstrings relax off. There we go. Feels nice. So now on for the quads. I'm going to try and do my best to preserve my dignity. Keep in mind that the flexibility in this leg is still improving, but I'll start in some kind of kneeling position. And trust me, it's taken about a month of solid effort here to be able to kneel. And then we kind of stretch back and it will take you time to be able to do this. So just work with getting the range of motion further and further back. But we stretch back into position and we extend our hips upwards, squeeze the glutes upwards. And you can feel the tension through the quads. Really squeezing upwards. And if we keep squeezing upwards and take a nice deep breath, you'll gradually feel the quads loosen up. How'd you get out of this one, Phil? I'll show you in a second. <laughs> and as the quads loosen up, even though you're pushing upwards with it, basically, your butt comes ever closer to your heels. Now, getting out of this is no longer dignified for me because I've still got a little bit of pain in the left leg. So I kind of roll out of it like that. <laughs> and there we go. But trust me, those are the two go-to stretches that I personally use just to keep the flexibility in top-notch condition and the muscles nice and supple. I don't do these immediately before training. I do it only after training. Ideally, immediately after. Today, I've been a bit lackadaisical, watching a bit of qualifying on the TV. So, a bit later on in the afternoon. So, work up into it carefully. You do not want to put too much stress on the muscle and cause a tear. Let the muscle gradually relax. So, I hope that answers your question, Eddie. Cheers.